The coronavirus has tested America's healthcare system like never before. It's left some patients, even on their deathbeds, fearing more for the cost of care than for their own lives. So what happens if you're uninsured in America? Will your bills be paid? And will America's healthcare system continue to profit off a pandemic? In total, my bill was $35,000. Patients end up going through bankruptcy uh, to pay medical bills. What motivates them most is making money. This is a huge worry. But it's something we're going to look at, and we have been looking at it. First things first, how does the US healthcare system work? And why aren't some people covered? Of the roughly 330 million Americans, just over 73% have some form of private medical insurance organized through their employer. A further 18% are covered by the state-funded plans Medicare and Medicaid, but that's mostly for those over 65 and some on low income added under President Obama, which leaves about 30 million people or 9% of the population with no medical insurance at all. When you don't have health insurance, the cost of going to a doctor can be enormous and, you know, way above the capacity of any individual to pay. Three healthcare lobbyists to every member of Congress are paid to ensure the status quo is maintained. Many people say the high cost of insurance is the main reason they lack coverage. Some simply don't have access to coverage through their job. And some people, particularly poor people in states that didn't expand Medicaid, that's the government-run fund, remember, just can't get access to financial help. In normal times, these people struggle, but in a global pandemic, they become acutely vulnerable. And as the economy grinds to a halt and more people lose their jobs, more are also losing their access to health coverage through their employer. There is a law in the US that means if you present at the emergency room, you have a right to be treated, whether you're insured or not. But the big question for the uninsured is... Who is going to pay for it? That's the very question being asked by dying patients, according to this frontline nurse. I've been in critical care for 12 years. I'm no stranger to some of the pitfalls of our healthcare system in the United States. Uh, however, I just have never seen it in such um, dire circumstances. I think it's the last thing something sh someone should have to worry about when they're so critically ill and requiring such a, a life-saving measure. And take Danny Eschini. She's already battling cancer, undergoing chemotherapy and recovering from coronavirus. In total, my bill was $35,000. Danny was briefly uninsured while moving states for a new job. In that time, she contracted COVID-19. Since then, she racked up a huge bill after going back and forth from emergency rooms and ICUs, paying for tests and care. How did you feel when, having gone through everything you've been through with cancer and then with COVID, to then have this huge bill land on your doorstep? It's devastating, it's exhausting, it feels like What's the point of having worked for the last 20 years? What was the point of going to school? Her home state of Massachusetts says her monthly salary exceeds the $1,400 limit, so she didn't qualify for financial help. While undergoing chemotherapy, she told us this. I'm so furious that corporations are getting bailed out left and right while hospital bills stack up for sick people. It doesn't seem right. It's exhausting, but I'm still alive, and that's a lot. Massachusetts State Authority told us they would look into Danny's case and would like to help resolve this individual's situation. Doctors say Danny's case, though, isn't unique, and this is happening across America. Patients end up going through bankruptcy uh, to pay medical bills. It's just, a, it's just a crisis exacerbated. I think it's inevitable that our, there are many, many people who are avoiding going to the hospital or delaying going to the hospital because they are afraid of the inability to pay. What's the worst case scenario here? As an ER doctor, that must greatly disturb you. The worst case scenario is they stay home and they die and we never see them. With tens of thousands of Americans already dead from COVID-19, the pressure is on the government to flatten curves across states and make sure everyone gets the care they need. So is President Trump's administration doing anything to protect the uninsured? Well, he's aware of the concerns. Even his favorite news channel, Fox, has been challenging him on it. This is a huge worry yeah, yeah. for people well, in this country who were in that donut hole. They don't, have, they don't have commercial insurance. They don't qualify for Medicaid. Right. What do there they do? Group. And it's a pretty big group. We're looking at it. Are you committing that there's no, something No, I'm not committing, but it's something we're going to look at. I can't for... commit. I have to get approval from it. I have a thing called Congress. Ah, yes, that thing called Congress. It has passed a bipartisan bill to help with... Testing, 
testing, testing. This legislation facilitates free coronavirus testing for everyone who needs a test, including the uninsured. Although Danny, who you saw earlier, told us her coronavirus test cost her $970. That's likely to have happened because her bill came before the emergency measures kicked in. And while President Trump is saying he's looking into this, he's actually turned his back on plans to expand coverage to uninsured Americans in this crisis. Health insurers were getting ready for a White House announcement to expand Obamacare, which would give newly uninsured Americans who'd lost their job a chance to enroll in health insurance plans. The announcement never came. Trump has long been opposed to Obamacare, which, as we mentioned earlier, expanded Medicaid to lots of low-income Americans, as well as trying to make health insurance plans from private companies more affordable. Obamacare is dead. I've been saying it for a long time. Trump's plan is now to cover coronavirus treatments for the uninsured by paying hospitals for those costs. This should alleviate any concern uninsured Americans may have about seeking the coronavirus treatment. But the hospital groups themselves don't know what this will look like, and the flaws of a complex system are suddenly in razor-sharp focus. The healthcare industry in the United States is broken, and there's not going to be an easy way there's no one system, there's no one biller, there's no one company that you owe this debt obligation to, and there's no protections um, for people like me who are poor and sick um, and puts you in an impossible position. You might be thinking if people are struggling this much without insurance in the midst of a global pandemic, why aren't the costs of insurance simply lowered or written off altogether? For the hospitals, it, 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 although you know there's been an effort to shift this, Sick patients are, you know, how they make money. At least three of the big insurance companies have said that they will waive some costs for people during this crisis. But this man, who used to work in the industry, says they're still putting profits before patients. What motivates them most uh, is making money. In my tenure uh, working with the uh, top executives of these companies, uh, I know, I can assure you, that the main motivation is to meet Wall Street's expectations. I can't even recall having a conversation at that level with the top executives about the health and well-being of the people who are insured by the company. People would hear that and be agog, frankly. I did it myself for 20 years. I can assure you that is exactly what's going on. America's biggest insurer, United Health Group, is one of the companies saying it'll waive costs for some people. But given that in the first three months of 2020, it made $5 billion, it can probably afford to. United Health Group says, from the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic, our singular priority has remained clear, the health, safety and support of the people and communities we serve. But let's face it, the American healthcare system has always prioritised those who are able to pay for care. But now, with the contagious killer virus spreading around the country indiscriminately, the health of the poor in society becomes just as important as the health of the wealthiest. Some think it's this that will spark change. It's a once in a generation moment. I've often thought the impetus for uh, the National Health Service in the UK came at the end of World War II. If we cut out the money worries which illness brings, then there'd be no reason to put off getting advice and treatment. And maybe this can be our moment in this country for people to wake up to realize we've got to do something fundamentally different from what we've done uh, in the past. America is, of course, not unique in the pain this virus is causing its people. Health systems in countries across the world have been stretched during this crisis. Not enough beds, not enough tests, not enough ventilators, not enough protective equipment, no vaccine. Yet while most Europeans are benefiting from a universal healthcare system, often free at the point of use, the healthcare debate in America rages on. But this time, more lives are on the line than ever before.